How's it going? So uh, today we are installing the nuclear controller on my Tularia XXX. And then we'll go out, take it a ride, see how she feels. So let's get started. And now she's kind of dirty, but she'll be fine. I'll clean her up afterwards. But first thing we have to do is take the skid plate off. Then we got to get her up on the, on the uh, stand here. So let's get that done really quick. So this is a, I don't have a clue. There's no size on it, damn it. I think it's a four. But there's two, there's two screws here and there's two underneath. So I'll just get this off really quick. Okay, got it off. Just set this in the sink for now. I'll clean it later. Okay, now let's get her on a stand. All right, so step two is we'll get this rear shock taken off so we can lower the swing arm and get access to the battery so we can disconnect it. And of course, it's never that easy. Like these things are still kind of holding it. There we go. Okay. Need to disconnect this battery here. Okay. So battery's disconnected. So now we can go ahead and start stripping off the electrical stuff. So we need to take this cover off right here and then we should be good to take this off. So I'm not gonna take all three screws off. I think this is fine because we can have access to pull this out. So we should be fine. And this is just four screws, two on each side to drop that out. But before we do that, let's just take a look at what we got in here. So we got the controller itself. We've got the new display. Okay, the uh, mount for the triple X. We got the different plugs here, hull, throttle and brake. And then I'm not sure what this one is. INI4, maybe that's the uh, display. Not sure. You know, I really don't know what this is for here. I'm guessing maybe it's the display. Doesn't seem long enough though. Let's see here. Oh yeah, it's long enough. Yeah, so I think we have to actually take this plate off here and this like plugs into there somewhere. I think it's the very first one. So first let's get this mounted on. So you can see here, it's got these little holes for the, uh, I'm guessing these nuts here. So obviously this is the inside. So we need to throw these in there. And then this is what the uh, stock screws are gonna mount to. So I guess they just go in like this. And that should mount right on, just like the stock. Now let's figure this thing out here. So we got a lot of little screws to take off. Five. So I'm pretty sure it goes in the system tag. So, so see, you got system, you got USB, you got brake, you got throttle, speed. You got all these little tabs here, but for this guy, I think we're only concerned with system. There we go. Okay, so now it's in. So there's these three sort of tracks on here that protrude out and the other side's flat. So the part that has the three tracks that protrude out, that's facing up. Okay, so now, all right. So here we go. So the next step is to, so it has a little cover here. You gotta loosen these two, these two side ones here and then take this off. So you can see this mount. It's just like a GoPro mount basically. And it's just gonna take the place of this, I guess. So this is loose now. Take this the rest of the way off. You gotta make sure your bars are, are straight when you tighten it back up. All right, we got our mount here for our display. When I have the camera on my head and the helmet, it's hard to like maneuver and see what the hell I'm doing. So, you know, it stays pretty loose when you, t I guess it's okay, but yeah, it's not very good. When you, no matter how hard you tighten it, it only tightens to a certain extent. And then this is a four, yeah, four. So you get two screws on each side. All right, so we got the different phase wires here. I'm gonna have to watch the, uh, the video to, to figure out which ones go where on the new one. But for now, let's just take this off here because 
as you can see, oh, UVW, I'm not sure what that means as far as color. The positive and negative is easy. Oh, J, V, so I'm guessing this is W. So I've disconnected the battery, so I, I should be safe here. So now we need to get these wires disconnected in here. All right, so this is the old one, nice and dirty. So now what we do is we just connect the wires that came with it to these ones. There's really only one way to go. Got your hall, and this one's gotta go this one. Okay, and this one, where does this one go? All right guys, well, hey, I'm gonna go watch the video and I'll be right back. All right, so a couple things. One was they had these little block, these little things in here, and I had to take them out. It was kind of blocking the, the plugs here. And I just had one of these plugs backwards. So I think I had to haul a little bit backwards. Yeah, so now they can all just kind of plug in. These are labeled, they're labeled on here so you kind of know where they go. So haul goes in here. Then you have your 9i4, your throttle goes into, oh, I guess this one up here. Oh wait, is it this one? It goes into this one, so I'll have to take this one out here. So the brake goes here, throttle brake goes there. So now, let's see, it goes like this, and then UVW. So luckily, these are all labeled here. So this is UV, these are all labeled, thank God. So we can just stick them on here, UVW. And let me grab the screws that I'm missing. First, let's take this guy out right here. Wait, which one did I need? This one, this one's throttle break right here. All right, I don't think I need this middle one, so I'll stick that in there. Okay, there we go. I mean, putting it back on, it's pretty straightforward. You just stick the screws you took off back in here. All right, get all the big wires back on. Now we just plug in the hall stuff. That goes there. This one goes here. Now this one is the INI4. And then finally we have our display cable and that goes right here. Okay, so we got everything wired up. Now it's just kind of a matter of stuffing everything back in and trying to line everything up so we can screw it back in. Okay, so they actually did fit. Just the nuts were kind of far back and you had to pull them forward and then screw it, but yeah, got that on. I guess now let's see if this thing turns on. Button first, turns on. Interesting, this thing still comes on. This has a state of charge. Well, I guess I'll just keep both of them. All right, so actually I have to watch the video on how to program this thing, and I'll be right back. Okay, so basically it just went through, all you do is you go to full setup and you turn it to on, and then it'll go through each of these. It tells you to hit the brake, but I don't have my brake connector hooked up, so it just says not connected, so it just skips that, goes to throttle, you pull the throttle, and then it checks the motor, the wheel spins, and it goes through a few steps here, and uh, that's pretty much it. So I'm gonna put this thing back together, get like the skid plate cleaned up and stuff, and then I'll see you outside for a little test ride. Okay, I got the cover and the um, skid plate back on, cleaned up. I have to say, it doesn't look too shabby at all. So uh, let's take it for a ride, see how it feels. I'll give you my final thoughts on it, and uh, what's next. All right, and we're out. So I kinda wanna see how accurate this speedometer is. It seems to be within one mile an hour, maybe even half a mile an hour, so that's pretty good. It's been a while since I've been on this Triple uh, X. Let's see if I picked up any top speed. Nah, it's pretty much exactly the same as it was before. So, I mean, as far as the tune, it's pretty much exactly the same as it was with the stock controller. But man, the throttle is friggin' smooth as hell. Yeah, the, the, the power comes on really, really smooth with this controller. So the speedometer seems to be about two miles an hour fast, but I'll just keep that in mind when I'm riding. So I still have the old display on there, it shows the battery percentage and stuff still. But I mean, I have it right here. I wish it showed their actual percentage though. I have no idea how to change the modes, none of these buttons will change the modes. Like power modes, one, two, and three, so I can see where they're configured inside controller settings, but these buttons, none of these buttons will actually change the mode. Push them, hold them, they don't do anything. And then there was some instructions on how to configure those buttons to change the modes, and that option doesn't exist in the controller, so I don't, I don't know. What I did is I just put mode one in, in full power. So I just configured it to be full power, the same as mode three. I mean, I'm never gonna ride in the lower power modes anyway, so I don't really care if I can't change the modes, but 
it is a little bit of an annoying that if someone else is riding the bike and I want to, you know, lower the power a bit, I, I can't without actually having to go into the controller. I mean, I'm sure there's a way to set those buttons to switch the power modes. I just don't know how. So you can see how many amps are being drawn right here. But yeah, I have this set at 110 amps. Yeah, so now this thing just needs a battery. So there's a few battery options that you want, and there's two chai batteries you can choose from. I just don't, I really don't want to fork out, you know, $2,000 for a battery. You know, I'd be super happy to do a bunch of review videos on one if one of these companies wanted to send me one for review, but yeah, I, I do think the, uh, the feel of the throttle did improve. It's a lot less twitchy and it's, yeah, it just feels smoother. The power delivery feels smoother with this controller compared to the stock. Now, even if you got a battery, you won't be able to run more than like 12 kilowatts. That's pretty much all this motor will take is 12. And you'll get maybe about 60 miles an hour if you're doing the 48 tooth sprocket. I have the 54, so I probably hit around 57 or something like that. You know, of course, way more torque too, but yeah, I kind of miss riding this thing. It's so comfortable. They got the uh, peg extenders on there, the bar risers. Then I got the aftermarket seat that kind of makes it a little bit taller. So the ergonomics on these, on this my setup right now are pretty good. Yeah, so anyways, I've been thinking about selling this Triple X. I'm just not sure yet. I do have like a, two bikes coming that I ordered. One of them's a little pit bike, a little 72 volt pit bike. It comes stock 72 volts. And then the other one is that bike I designed, maybe around the size, between the size of a Suron and a Suron Ultra. But that's uh, it's a 12 kilowatt stock, got a giant battery, 84 volts. Instead of 60 or 72, it's got 84 volt. So it's 96 fully charged. And it's got a 50 amp hour battery, so 84 times 50 is a massive battery. So anyways, that's coming. So, you know, I just, I don't need this. So, with the aftermarket seat, it's like almost a $300 seat. And this nuclear controller and all the other upgrades. I think I'm going to, I'm going to sell it for 4000 It's got a lot of upgrades, upgraded tires, seat, bars, grips, pegs, extenders, controller. I think 4000 is a pretty good deal for all that. So I'll be pretty firm on that price. Not, no, not really interested in any trades either. So if anyone's in Houston, you guys are interested in buying this thing, just shoot me a message. But hey, that's going to do it for this one, guys. Let me know if you have any questions in the chat, and I'll see you next time. Bye.